Last December, we bought a Starlink dish, hoping to be able to use it on our big winter trip to California and Arizona. But we ended up having to return it, since at the time, it wouldn't have worked. Recently, though, everything has changed. So, should we give Starlink a second chance? We were so excited when we received our Starlink dish last December. It had arrived just in time for us to take it on our three-month trip to the southwestern United States. I unboxed it for testing and started filming a thorough review. We were under the impression that we'd simply be able to update our address to new locations along our trip and have fast, unlimited internet the whole way. For those of you not familiar with Starlink, it works very similar to how the cell phone network does, except the cell towers are actually satellites in space, zipping around the globe at 17,000 miles per hour. Just like cell phone towers, each satellite has a limit on how many users it can support at the same time. To make sure everyone gets fast service, Starlink has divided the world up into hexagon-shaped cells and puts limits on how many Starlink ground receivers can be activated in each one. In their terms of service, they make it very clear that they only guarantee service at your registered address. At the time we got our unit, it wouldn't work at all if you traveled more than 10 to 20 miles from that address. But as a hack, you could travel somewhere, then update your registered address to that new location, and boom, it would start working again. Unfortunately for us, this hack didn't work. I tested changing our location to a spot in Washington State we were planning to visit. To my dismay, I got this message. After we realized we wouldn't be able to use Starlink on our trip, we boxed it back up and returned it. Now, at the time, there was a very long wait list for most areas, so our video showing us returning one of these highly sought after dishes generated more negative comments than I've ever seen on any of our YouTube videos. There were a lot of haters out there. So we went on our trip and managed to get by using traditional land-based cell phone internet. It worked okay, but uploading large 4K videos to YouTube was very painful at times. I'd often have to let the uploads run overnight for like eight to 10 hours. Meanwhile, Starlink could be comparable to our home internet, taking only about 15 to 20 minutes for an upload. We figured we'd just have to wait until Starlink released their long-promised mobile version. And who knew when that might come out? Months? Years, maybe? Then, in early March, I started seeing comments on our video that roaming was enabled. I hopped on Reddit, and sure enough, reports were starting to come in that some people were having success using Starlink outside their home cell without changing their address. At the beginning, it seemed like only the American dishes were able to roam. But over time, I started seeing confirmations that Canadian dishes were roaming successfully too. It seemed like it might be the right time to give Starlink a second chance. However, there's always a however. Around the same time, I also read reports that they had stopped shipping the new rectangular dish in Canada. They were only shipping the older circular dish. For traveling, we really wanted the rectangular dish, since it's smaller, lighter, and has lower power consumption. So what do we do? We thought about ordering the circular dish and just dealing with the extra weight and power usage. We also considered ordering an American dish and having it shipped to an American address and picking it up there. The only hassle there would have been needing to make it a 48-hour trip to avoid paying duty. And who knows if having an American registered dish might have caused problems in the future, since we live in Canada and that's where it would be the majority of the year. So we decided to wait. Every so often, I would do a test order and see if it showed the circular or rectangular dish. It always showed the circular one. Until last night. I plugged in our home address for a test order and boom, a picture of the rectangular dish popped up. I went and told Mel and we decided we should just go for it. I put in the order and then sent an email to Starlink support just to confirm 100% that they'd be shipping a rectangular dish. So there you have it. We're giving Starlink a second chance. Stay tuned to see how it all goes. We'll be testing the roaming feature in BC this summer. I really hope I don't have to make a second return video. I can only imagine the comments we'd get. What do you think? Are you excited about Starlink as a mobile internet option? Do you think the service will become slower as more people come online or faster as they launch more satellites? 
In the meantime, why not check out our winter trip playlist? We love visiting so many spots in California and Arizona, even without Starlink. And keep in touch by dropping a like, subscribing, and turning on notifications. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next one.